2020 Dominate Conference is still in motion and we're taking it to the next level. Uh, you know, it brings to mind to me an old story. And uh, I, I'm sure you've probably heard this before, but you know, it's, it's important not only that you show up, but how you work, right? And one day, two woodcutters were having an argument about which one of them could cut more wood in a day's period. And in the morning, the two men took up their positions. Uh, first, they, they worked in, at the one speed, but in about an hour, one of them has heard that the other one has stopped cutting trees now. And he's thinking to myself, himself, you know, hey, if I just keep pushing through here, I'm going to get ahead. Obviously, I know I work better than this guy does anyway, realizing that this was his chance, right? So the fir first woodcutter, he started to cut trees with double efforts. Well, 10 minutes went by or so. He heard that his, his associate, the second woodcutter, had started to work again. So they're working almost, you know, side by side when the first woodcutter heard that his opponent had stopped again, another hour or so into it. So the, the first woodcutter, although he's, he's kind of befuddled by this whole thing, he says, we, you know, we th he thought he was in a, a competition. He continues working feverishly, feeling the smell of victory on his, on, on his fingertips. And this lasted all day long. Each hour, one of the woodcutters stopped for 10 minutes and the other one continued to work. Well, when time came up at the end of the day, the first woodcutter who had worked without stopping was absolutely certain. There's no way he could have lost. He was positive. He was sure that he had won the prize. He was pretty surprised to know that he was mistaken. How is it possible, he asked his partner, every hour I heard that you stopped the work for 10 minutes. How could you cut more trees than I? It's, it's just impossible. And the second woodcutter looked at him. He said, you know, it's really quite simple. In fact, every hour I stopped the work for 10 minutes and when, when you were still cutting trees, I sharpened my ax. I want you to take away from that, that let ATS be your ax sharpener. That's what we're here for. You can get all the information you need. You can get your ax sharpened every single day. And if you want, you can even have someone help you learn how to sharpen your ax better. So that's the point, ATS, Riqueza, where else can you get a real life business, sales, marketing, now coming up technology, education? I mean, we have thousands of classes that you can take at your own time on your own schedule and make your progress the way you want to without ever going in debt and have a real support group. It's, it's more of a, in some cases, it's a business incubator type thing and you can't get that for what you can get it for here anywhere else and have that kind of support. So please let ATS and Riqueza sharpen your ax. Let us help you. So, well, we, we really have kind of had a full day today, right? Well, it's, it's not anywhere close to over yet. Get ready because we've saved the best for last. We're about to put the whipped cream and the cherry on top. Antonio T. Smith Jr. Antonio T. Smith Jr. is an American tech CEO and millionaire who is on pace to become a billionaire by 2025. With headquarters on four different continents and is creating 100,000 millionaires while giving away $1.5 billion by 2025. Antonio is passionate about artificial intelligence, and plans to be the first person to create the master algorithm, which he plans to use to create a resource-based society that will completely eliminate the need for money. Although, Antonio, I do appreciate money. Please heartily welcome Mr. Antonio T. Smith, Jr.
Thank you so much. I sure appreciate you. Thank you so much, Jerry. You are just fantastic. My friends, I want to tell you as we seep throughout what is this world that you have dreams. And these dreams are, they're shut up in you. You have these dreams and you did not get the loan this year. As a matter of fact, uh, you listen to all the prophets on Facebook Live, all the soul seers and the sea sowers, all the preachers, all the evangelists, all the spiritual leaders tell you that in 2019, that 2020 was going to be the year of vision. Because 2020 was going to be the year which you see everything. And the first thing you saw was quarantine. And then you saw poverty. And then you saw all these other things. But I want to give you a message of hope. Because I want to tell you right now that this is still your year. It does not matter that it may be 20 something days left. Because God does not care about time the way you do. I want to push to you immediately that it will not matter how much time is left because you can still get what you desire in this entire year. It is my job to charge you with what I am supposed to talk about today. So for the times I was shared together, I want to speak with you on the subject, how to get more than what you've ever thought you ever could. Now, I have plenty of points but the one point is time does not matter. You can have everything you want by the end of this year. Do me a favor. Repeat with me right now. Time does not matter. Go ahead. Say it with me. Time does not matter. matter. Put it in the chat if I could not hear you because of the webinar. Time does not matter. You do not serve a God. You do not live in a reality in which time is the God of your dreams. My friends, sometimes it will, feel, it will feel like life is unfair. The first thing I want to tell you is that life is fair. Everybody listen to me. Stop multitasking for this one moment. You can multitask after I say what I'm getting ready to say. Your life is 100% fair. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. And then after that, you can think about the beans on the kitchen stove and the corn on your picky toe. You can think about all these things. Here's what I want to tell you. And I want to tell you to you graciously. No matter what you're going through, it is the kindest thing life is doing to you to get you to the next level. Go ahead. You go back multitasking. You can scroll Facebook while you're listening to me. If you caught that, you caught the whole message that right now life is doing the most kindest pain it could possibly give to you. Right now, life is doing the kindest bills in your inbox, bills in your mailbox. Right now, life has given you the kindest amount of overdraft. Right now, life has decided that the pain you have right now is the kindest possible thing that I could do to you. So I can get you to the next level. It means that your life is not fair. It means that somehow when the wind finished blowing you where it will blow you, your feet will be right where they should. So life is not fair. Now that you know that life is not fair, doing your best is not good enough. That's the second point I want to give to you. Doing your best is not good enough enough. In order for you to get more than what you ever expected, you need to first realize two things. Number one, life is not unfair. Life is completely fair. Life is so fair that life is punching you in the face the softest that it can punch you. Life has taken enough money away from you, but just enough for you not to kill yourself. Life has hit you with a lot of hits but life has always pulled back before life killed you. Up until this point, my friends, if your job was over, you would be dead. And since you're not dead, life has not been unfair. The second point I've told you thus far is doing your best is not good enough. Listen, my friends, 
I don't know why y'all keep listening to motivational speakers. I'm not sure what this is about. Um, I, I, I just want to insert my opinion here just for a second. That listening to a motivational speaker with no substance is the same thing as listening to a man teach women about relationship advice. It just makes no sense. It, it, it makes no sense for you to listen to motivational speakers tell you all this jazz and this hype and this hippity doo dah and all that stuff because they don't even listen to their own words. Doing your best is not good enough. What if God only did God's best for you? You see, God doesn't just do God's best. Life didn't wake you up with just the best. Life gave you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think for. This morning when you woke up, you didn't wake up with life's best effort. You woke up with the very best possible outcome there could be. Doing your best is not good enough. You got to do more. Every single person out here is doing their best and they're not getting what they want. 96% of this world is controlled by 1% of this world. Somebody needs to be honest with you and tell you that doing your best is not enough. Most of you, and it's been an astonishing number, almost 50% have been here for nearly eight hours. But the other 50%, they did their best. They were working, so they clocked in when they could. They were busy, so they caught it when they could. And there will be a difference between the 50% who is the best and the 50% who just gave their best. My friends, I watched. I sat down. It worked its way into my keynote. I listened to two different responses. I saw 90 different people say, Tempest, I'd like to be coached by you. And then as the messages came to Deanna, there were only two responses. Response number one, when they found out the price, which is 99.9999999% discounted, said, I'm okay. The other people said, wow, that's incredibly discounted. You see, some of you you haven't moved out of educating yourself to loving yourself. Because those who love themselves always invest in themselves, even when they don't have the resources to invest in themselves. Doing your best says, I can't afford it, so I would do whatever I need to do, but I won't sacrifice. I'll just do whatever I need to do. Doing more than your best says no matter what it takes, no matter how much it breaks me, no matter how much it hurts me, even if I can't pay my rent on time, I will invest in myself. Two things I've told you so far, my friends. If you want to get more than you've ever expected, the first thing you have to do is you just got to know that life ain't being unfair to you. The second thing you have to do is you need to know immediately that doing your best is not good enough. The third thing you need to do is pretty simple. If you can think it, it's already yours. Now, I'm spitting this from facts. I'm telling you that you cannot have a thought, which is a vibration, unless that thought has a vibrational equivalent. I'm telling you that if you thought something, it means that somewhere out there that thing is vibrating and you are at the vibrational equivalency of that thinking. But the problem is y'all think and don't act. The second problem is you think, act, and don't keep acting. But in order to live a good life, in order to live the life that you want, you got to know that you will be rejected, that you will write a book. It would be the greatest book of your life. It would be the greatest book on earth, and you will get rejected over 20 times, like the author of Harry Potter. 
You need to know that some of you will start your own company and get fired by the board. Then start another company, an animation company. And then dominate over there only to have that same board beg you to come back. That's Steve Jobs if you're not familiar. But that's not the only person. The Twitter CEO. He got fired. Started the company. One of the founders. Fired by the board. Only to ask to come back to replace the person who replaced him. I've told you three things so far. Nothing else matters. Mattering number one, life is not unfair. Mattering number two, Tanya, doing your best is not good enough. Kathy, the third thing I've told you is if you thought it, it's already yours. That means I got to tell you a fourth thing because I'm nowhere near done. A fourth thing is pretty simple. Abundance is your birthright. That's the fourth thing. Will you repeat that to me, please? Abundance is my birthright. Can I see you say some of that? that that's fantastic. You all speak English so well. If you can just put that down in the chat for me, that'll help me see your names as well, and I see you vibing with me. Abundance is my birthright. Please know, my friends, that when you were born, or when you woke up this morning, your blood did not decide to take a day off. Your blood is in abundance. Your lungs have been listening for eight hours and they never stopped breathing. At no point did your liver say your credit messed up. At no point did your heart say, well, you know, you you got low self-esteem, so we not we going to beat at low self-esteem. Everything that has ever given you life, everything that has sustained your very existence, everything has come with abundance. You did not earn your heart. You did not earn your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder. You did not earn the very breath that you're breathing right now. And if you disagree with me, you didn't even earn that disagreement. It was yours by birthright. I've told you a few things. May I repeat them? I like to tell you, number one, life is not unfair. Number two, doing your best is simply just not good enough. Number three, if you thought it, it's already yours. And number four, abundance is simply your birthright. Can I have somebody put that in the chat for me? Because I'm going from my memory files here. If you don't mind, number one, I said, life is not unfair. Number two, I said, you know, doing your best is simply not good enough. Number three, if you can desire it, if you can think about it, you can achieve it. And number four, abundance is your birthright. Now, before I move forward to five, six, seven, eight, and 59, I want to tell you that if you didn't catch number one, unfortunately, you won't catch the rest of this keynote. I keep repeating because the first four steps, they all say the same thing, just in different ways. And they are all a reiteration of, number one, life is not unfair. Well, as I look down in my comments and I see a man named Jerry, who seems to be a prophet, life is not unfair. And I know your situation is different. And I know everybody would say their situation is different, but God has done the kindest thing God can do to you to make you have the hunger you have right now. Is there anybody out there that got hunger? Can I get you to put, if you got hunger that you didn't have a few years ago, if, 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 if all of a sudden you're saying, I refuse to stop, but you didn't say that just a few years ago, if the pain that you have right now has caused you to have a fire shut up in your bones. Can I put you to, can I get you to put one in the chat just for me, just for a second? I just want you to put one in the chat. I just need to see it light up, see if I got the right folk. There's got to be somebody out there that has said that no matter how much I be slayed, I will continue to move forward. Before I get to number five, I just want to tell you something about faith. My friends, sometimes you have to be dumb enough to use faith and smart enough to remember that you got it. May I repeat that? Can you quote me on Twitter or something? 
Sometimes you have to be dumb enough to use faith and smart enough to remember that you got it. I think third time is a charm. Sometimes you got to be dumb enough to use faith and smart enough to remember that you got it. But you know what? What you mean by that, Antonio? I'm glad you asked. Because it don't make sense when you got to use faith. I ain't never in my life, y'all, used faith and it made sense. I wish I had somebody. I, I, I have never in my whole life had to use faith and it was logical at the time. I've never. I've, I've just never in my life. When I built this company, when I went to Houston, Texas, Studywood, Texas, to be exact, that's the hood. Don't nothing good come from Studywood. I went and found me a big bone girl named Tippis. And I went and found Tippis who was quiet and everybody else passed up on Tippis. And it didn't make no sense for me to say, Tippis, you a CEO now. Didn't make no sense. Didn't make no sense. Tippis had never seed or eed or owed. It didn't make no sense that I picked somebody with no degrees to hire people with degrees. But when I first saw her, my faith said she's the one. That don't make no logical sense. But you ain't got to like that. Didn't make no sense that when <clears throat> I first start blowing up, I was doing work for Mr. Les Brown. Mr. Les Brown was richer than me. I had to have faith to say I could do the job that needs to be done. But because of that faith, I'm richer than Mr. Les Brown. Rewind, press play. I don't mind saying it twice. At first, I'm helping Mr. Les Brown, who was richer than me. Now I'm far richer than Les Brown. And anybody else you could think of. And all I do with that money is give it away. Some of you may hear me brag. His very good friend, or his very good daughter, is my good friend. She may be on. I ain't even checked. I've got no problem saying that because I ain't saying nothing wrong. What I'm saying is it don't make sense. But faith got me here. And faith ain't supposed to make sense. I pause it for dramatic effect. Is it working? <laughs> Number five. Now that you understand what's happening in your life, maybe I should tell you now, first and foremost, money is not the root of all evil. Watch it, Reverend. Come on, sir. Money is not the root of all evil. Mistreating people is. Ooh. Money is not the root of all evil. Mistreating people is. And that will never change. I've got a good friend. I'm richer than him too. And my good friend happens to be the number one speaker in the world. And every time I hear Mr. Eric Thomas, I try to run through a wall. Every time I try to hear Les Brown, I try to run through a wall. All I do, all God doggone day, is listen to Eric Thomas and Les Brown, and I be running through walls. I don't even know how I got shoulders or ligaments left because they keep me running through walls every morning at 6.30 in the morning. And they all tell me, or they both tell me, every morning, I ain't did enough. Rewind, press play. Here's these two gentlemen that consistently over and over and over and over and over tell me, Antonio, I don't care what you've done. It ain't enough. Antonio, you could be a 50 billionaire. Ain't enough. A hundred billionaire. It's not enough. Because until you treat people well and keep doing it. You haven't made a difference. I've told you a few things, my friends, five things to be exact. Number one, I told you life didn't treat you unfair. Number two, I told you that doing your best is not good enough. Number three, I've told you that you know what? If you can think it, you can achieve it. 
Number four, I told you, abundance of your birthright. Then I snuck in there between number five. I'm pretty rich. But I didn't get that because I'm good. I got that by faith. May I say it again? Because I didn't get the response I wanted. I worked on that all night. I worked on that all night. I didn't get here because I'm good. I got here by being stupid. Okay, third time, maybe the whole conference going to get it. I didn't get here by being intelligent. I got here by being ignorant. Because every single time, and believe me, me and Serena Brown Travis got beat up. Is she on? Oh, we're good, damn. We got beat up. Me and Susan Sorrentino got beat up. And Serena, God bless her soul, and Susan, God bless her soul, they just as ignorant as me. Because we kept going. I wish I had somebody. It don't make no doggone sense. Serena, with her ignorant self, then got on here did a keynote with COVID. Intelligence says, Serena, lay down. Serena says, I ain't did enough. I sure hope y'all hear me. This ain't about being smart. In order for you to get every single thing that you want, more than what you expected out your life, you got to act like Les Brown. What, you thought I was dissing? I don't diss nobody. In order to get more than you ever thought about your life, you got to act like E.T. In order to get more than what you ever thought out your life, you got to act like Susan Sorrentino. This is in my script. I got it memorized. In order to get anything more than what you ever expected out your life, you got to act like Serena. Give food away for free in a pandemic and let the same people you blessed in the pandemic give you COVID-19 and you keep moving forward. Because getting here ain't about being smart. Getting here has everything to do with being ignorant. Ignorant as defined by Webster's Dictionary is a state of being uneducated, uninformed, or unaware. And since most of you are educated, I can't say you're uneducated, so let's just throw that out the window. And since most of you are baby boomers, I can't say you're uninformed, you're wiser than me. Let's throw that out the window. But you need to learn how to be unaware. Can I tell you a story that reinforces this unaware? One day, a few years ago, one of my good friends said, man, tell me, he don't like you. I said, girl, I was unaware he existed. <laughs> Every now and then, you got to be unaware of the forces that are trying to make you be so smart you stop. Smart people, they procrastinate. Smart people can tell you all the ways things don't work, things don't exist. Smart people can tell you how ATS wouldn't go never be nothing. Smart people will tell you that you better stop baking them cakes, Kathy. Smart people will tell Serena, you ain't your daddy, stop speaking. But only ignorant people say positive words only. On my journey, I have discovered a few things. I have discovered, number one, if you want to live a life better than expected, you should probably stop thinking life is unfair. Number two, if you want to live a life better than expected, you should probably stop thinking that doing your best is good enough. Number three, if you want to live a life that's better than what you got right now, you should probably stop or start thinking that whatever you think is already yours. Number four thing I learned, abundance is your birthright. And the fifth thing, money is not the root of all evil. Mistreating people is. Can I tell you number six now, my friends? <clears throat> I attract my own experience. Oh, this is where I lose my whole crowd. Now, I didn't talk about E.T. I didn't talk about Les Brown. I didn't talk about Serena Brown Travis, Serena, Sor I mean, Susan Sorrentino. I didn't talk about myself. I didn't talk about everybody. I'm just talking about everybody. I'm just a talking, talking person. And now 
Yeah, I wasn't offended by none of that. But as soon as I said you create your own experience, all of a sudden, now hold on now. Now I'm offended. You attract your own experience. What number is that? I feel like it's number six. It's number six. Grace told me it's number six. You attract your own experience. Yes, yes, yes. It's in God's will, church folk. But yes, yes, yes. It's in your attraction too. Do you understand? If you're attracting what you want, Amanda, good job. If you're attracting what you don't want, good job. It's a learning lesson in which you are supposed to learn from. Instead of cussing me out, ask yourself, what am I supposed to learn from this situation? Number seven. I I want to get out there pretty quick because I ain't want nobody to throw stones at me. It gets worse, though. It gets worse. Oh. Um, Adrian, tell me this is number eight. Well, number eight or seven, probably number eight. We're gonna roll with we're gonna we're gonna roll with Adrian because she's my marker, she's my mentor. Number eight. The law of attraction is consistent. Can I tell you what I want to tell you right here? I feel like I I, I feel the name uh, pushing through my my veins right now is Abby. Is Abby still on? Don't matter. She's going to get this signal all across, across the world. I feel like I'm talking to Carisha and Diana. I feel like I'm talking to Antonio. The law of attraction is consistent. Here's what I mean by that. That means that if you plant you a doggone seed, you can't pray that seed away. I don't care how much you put on your preacher voice, bishop voice. I don't care if you one of them kind of people that Preach for 10 minutes and prophesy for 45. I don't care if you one of them preachers that do this here. Well, amen. God is good. Amen. It don't matter. If you put the seed in the ground, that's coming up. But wait. Wait on, wait, 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 wait. I prayed that for forgiveness. That ain't got nothing to do with that harvest. You're just going to be a forgive person with a terrible harvest. Just because you are forgiven, just because you are saved, does not mean you're not in the terrible harvest you created. I'll say it again. Just because you are forgiven, just because you are saved, does not mean that you're not in a terrible harvest that you have not created. Number one, I said, listen, life, it ain't that fair, honey. But it is fair. And when it gets fair, that's because life could have killed you. But life let you wake up this morning. Two in them, doing your best ain't good enough. Three, you thought about it, you can achieve it. You can rewind this video to get to the others because I want to get to a high point. The next thing you need to do when you want to feel like you're supposed to have more than what you're supposed to have, get in alignment is my next thing. Number nine, according to my friend Adrian. This time I'm talking to all y'all. In 2012, Joel Osteen, bless his soul, told me my motives were incorrect. And went on an entire campaign to tell me how if I want to be blessed, my motives need to be aligned with God's motives. I'm going to admit to y'all, I'm like Peter. And that uh, Christian text of y'all that y'all like to use and quote, I don't really be following everything. You know, I'll cut your whole ear off. You know, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm, you know, I don't 
I'm like Tempest, you know, Tempest is flipping tables, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I don't really do everything right. I go from incredibly, incredibly astute in a keynote, and all of a sudden I I start I start acting like backwoods Jim. All in one keynote, five minutes apart. So I gotta admit to all y'all, when Joe Osteen told me that, he pissed me off. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, I hope you don't think I'm good. Oh. I didn't get here by being good. I got here by accounting for my wickedness and doing good. I think I ought to say that again. I didn't get here by being good. I got here by accounting for my wickedness and doing good. Contrary to popular belief, my friends, just because you know well don't mean you do well. All right. So when Joel told me that, my first reaction was knock Joel out. I ain't gonna lie to you. I come from a fighting place. But I like Joel, so I ain't giving these hands. <laughs> oh, you're gonna listen to me today. Oh, nobody like being told how bad of a person you is with a polite voice and tone. I felt like he corrected me too smoothly. At least cussed me out, but that's not Joel's style. Then he had his right-hand man tell me, Tony is what he called me, John Bowman is his name, you should pray that you become the least offended person on planet Earth. So I did that all year. Let me tell y'all something. Everybody had me messed up all year. I mean, I had the dog arguing with me. You understand? Yeah, I mean, it was just terrible all year long. But I learned something that year. I learned that I got mad way more than God did. I got upset over and over and over and over and over everything upset me my friends you could tell the quality of a man by what upsets him and you can tell the quality of a man by how he responds to adversity you can also tell the quality of a man by what he does for them who could do nothing for him and you can also tell the quality of a man by what he does in private the good he does and never tells you about it. You would be shocked. Most of you would say I'm a giving person. The truth is I am. Now I'm incredibly giving. That's no doubt about it. That's what you see. If I told y'all that I was 100 times more giving in private, that never gets posted, never gets talked about, never gets on TV, you would think I'm lying. But it's not. I'm not lying. I have Giving away stuff people should pay for. And did I do that because I'm good? No, I did that because Joel Osteen had the courage to look me in my face and say, you need to correct your motives. Which leads me to my last or second to last point. Get you a mentor fast. My friends, you only need two things to make it out of this life. I'm not sure if y'all know. You need two things. You only need two things. I don't know what they're telling you out there on these stages, but I'm telling you, you need two things. You need somebody who believes in you. It could just be one person. It ain't got to be a whole tribe. You just need one person to believe in you so they can hold you accountable when you do stupid stuff and then fill you up with love when you feel stupid yourself. And the second thing you need to do is just keep moving forward. That's it. I just simplified this whole life for you. Get you somebody who believes in you and never stop moving forward. You do those two things, you'll be all right. For me, I didn't find that until I went to Lakewood Church. I didn't find that until I was a standout amongst other standouts. There would be no ATS nothing if it was not first for the opportunity Joel Osteen 
and his staff to allow me to do ATS things in Lakewood. Can you see it? Can you see the 30 year old coming from a town of 48 people, 48,000 people? A church of 100 people on road, 70 of them show up. Can you see? They say, boy, you good. Go over 20,000 people. Can you imagine the culture shock I had? Can you imagine me going from leading no one to leading 20,000 people overnight? Amazing how the right mentor will see the big things inside of you. You see, half the people around me, nobody saw something in them, not this kind of stuff. They didn't let Grace speak. They told Grace, be quiet and watch them children. They didn't let Deanna do what Deanna was doing. I said, Deanna, run the whole company. They said, Tempest, be an employee. I said, Tempest, be a founder. That's because when Joel Osteen became Joel Osteen for me, I became Joel Osteen for them. I would really like that you hear me upon this day. That all of you need to find you a mentor as fast as possible. And my final point, because I ain't got nothing else to say after this. I could keep going, but I don't feel like it. You've been here long enough. Time's been well spent. And I'm giving you everything I got and I got more for you tomorrow. But that's not going to stop the fact I got this one more thing. My friends, sympathy has no place in your life. It is right here. I put my whole weight on it. I need all of y'all to listen to me right now. Y'all need to stop. getting out here and looking for a grade for your performance. It is time for you, my friends, to stop getting out here and dating people and looking for them to validate your existence. It's time to stop walking around your friends, having a bad attitude and making them prove how they love you just so you can prove to them, all right, fine, I'll get along with you today to start it all over. Let me help you. Let me bless you. Let me teach you. Let me hold you. Let me mold you. Get rid of all that sympathy. No more do you need someone to relate to you. It's time for you to relate to others. I'll say it again. You don't need nobody to relate to you. It's time for you to relate to others. What if I told you that every single problem, I sure hope y'all hear me, hear me, lean in. What if I told you that every single problem you have in your life right now is because you're not doing something for somebody else? What if I told you right now that the only way you could ever possibly have a problem on planet earth is because of righteousness what if i told you right now that you would eliminate every single problem in your life right now if you stop trying to live your life and start using your life to serve others somebody in chat say they hear me your problem your problem is You keep trying to live your best life. That's not how this works. That's not how life works. What if your heart, like literally, what if your heart says, I don't care nothing about this. I'm going to live my best life. And what if your heart decided, I'm going to live my best life. And and your heart 
beats and pumps blood and contracts blood to its maximum capacity. In 60 seconds, you would pass out from too much blood in your body. In 90 seconds, you would have so much internal bleeding, your organs would shut down. And 60 seconds later, you'd be dead. All because your heart said, I'm going to live my best life. Oh, I got to shine. Oh, yeah. No, that's not what your heart does. Your heart says, I'm going to do my job for the brain. Man, I sure hope y'all hear me, man. Your heart says, I'm going to do my job for the pinky toe. I'm going to do my job for the kneecap. The brain says, I'm going to do my job for the heart. I'm going to do my job for the uterus. Every last one of y'all problems come back to one thing. Righteousness. And you can see your righteousness because you're living your life to have a right life. I just know that at this point, I don't care about living. I don't care about making money. I don't care about being great. I care about you. And at some point, You're going to have to get to the point of your life when you stop having stuff to prove. And when you get there, you will find out you never had a reason to prove yourself in the first place. Grass is not looking at another blade of grass and saying, you know, I'm going to prove I'm going to grow faster than you today, right? That's not the way that works. So follow me for a moment as we journey to the end of this keynote. Hopefully I have not left you where you couldn't walk with me. Hopefully I haven't left you to where you're so offended by my words that you can't hear my following words. This life ain't about you. That's not a cliche. The reason you don't have the money you want is because you keep trying to get the money you want. If you just flip it and go give people the money they want, they would then give you half their money. And then you can charge a commission for the other half. My friends, I was charged to teach you how to live a life better than what you expected. I had quite a few points, but they wasn't points I told you at the very beginning. It's just one point. It's just one thing. And maybe you hear me and maybe you don't. And that's okay because I'm not here to judge you if you don't hear me. And I'm not here to celebrate you if you do hear me. I'm here to lay down my life for you, my friend. And as we get older, we do, we get to the point in which we start to protect what God gave us. I just bought a $400,000 house. I can't do that. That's, that's, that's not why you got the $400,000 house. I got this fancy job. I can't do that, but that's 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 not why you got the fancy job. Everybody mad at everybody because of their righteousness. The left side of the world hate the right side of the world. The black side of the world hate the white side of the world. The brown side of the world hate the every side of the world. That's not the way it works. The way it works in simplicity is that you were called here to this moment 
not to live your life, but to make sure others live their lives. And by that, you've made this world a better place and lived your best life. My challenge to you, this host is gonna give us closing remarks right after this. My challenge to you is do me a favor, do yourself a favor, kill your righteousness. If you do not crucify your cross, your righteousness will crucify you. It's time. It's time. There is nothing about this life that money matters. What matters is the person who gets the money. The last thing I'll say, Jerry, Phil, Vastine, Sabrina, Monica, Abby, Prophet Jerry, Vanessa, Law, Carisha, all of y'all matter more than me. And until you say that yourself about somebody else, you won't ever get to say that about somebody else on the large platform. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can't plant better. You can dominate. Wow. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you so much. Can we give some love? Can we get a little love? Woo! 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 Woo!